Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I will uh, recite some ayat from the Quran before I explain them. Uh, obviously, uh, it's better to um, set the ayat out first, present them to you. And then after that, we will try to um, develop the meanings of these ayats so you get a more substantial meaning of them. These ayat are at the beginning of Surat al haqqa Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Al haqqa مَلْحَقَّهُ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَلْحَقَّهُ كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ فَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِالطَّاغِيَةِ وَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةِ سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وثمانية أيام حسوما فترى القوم فيها صرعا كأنهم أعجاز نخل خاوية وجاء فرعون ومن قبله والمؤمنين تفكات بالخاطئة فعصوا رسول ربهم فأخذهم أخذة رابية إنا لما طغى الماء حملناكم في الجارية لنجعلها لكم تذكرة وتعيها أذن واعية صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم Dear brothers and sisters, these ayat Obviously, you've read the Qur'an many times, and I'm sure, depending on how old you are, of course, that you've read this particular segment of ayat in Surah Al-Haqqa at least multiple times. Let us try now to have a much more mental grip on the meanings of these ayat so that they have a, an influence in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our lives, in our behavior, and in our general social development. The first three ayat of this surah is basically speaking about the word al-haqqa. Al-haqqa. That's the first A, the first word. Malhaqa, what is alhaqa? Wama adraka malhaqa. And what would you know about alhaqa? You here, of course, is meant to be addressed to our beloved Prophet. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his. الحاقة ما الحاقة وما أدراك ما الحاقة What is الحاقة? Now that's an Arabic word obviously الحاقة You will if you take you know go to your 
translation of preference, whether it's English or some other language, and look up the word, and you'll find uh, sort of, you know, different types of meanings. Everyone is trying to do their best. Please don't impugn the uh, intentions of the translators. They're trying to do their best to bring out the meaning of this word and these ayat. Well, in addition to that, what you may have at home, your preference of reading the explanation or the translation of the meaning, to add to that, al-haqqa means what is inevitable, due to ultimate truth and justice. That's al-haqqa. What is obviously, certainly, without any doubt, going to occur, al-haqqa. It's taken from the verb haqqa. وَحَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is speaking about something that is going to, by all means, without any uncertainty, going to ultimately happen. الحاقة. ما الحاقة وما أدراك ما الحاقة. Okay. So we understand this. But then the following ayah, it says, كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ Thamud and Ad, these were two developed, if to, do, to use today's language, technologically advanced societies in their own time frame. Because in the course of human history, there are civilizations, modernities, uh, urban developments, uh, empires, uh, power structures that rise and then fall. This is the sequence of human history. We have these... So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrating for us, he takes two samples from this human history. One of them is Thamud, and the other one is Ad. Now these are not to be thought of as, oh, these are some type of primitive societies that existed uh, sometime in ancient history. No, that is not the case. These were highly developed societies, just like today we live in a world that has highly developed societies, technologically advanced basic infrastructures, militarily cutting edge technologies. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is focusing on our attention, on Thamud and Ad, it's like he's bringing to our mind what we have in today's world, because we have the equivalence of Thamud and Ad in today's world. But he wants us to learn. In today's world is a lesson in progress. We will not know the end of this lesson unless we live until that day or that time arrives. But in, in the past, there were parallel structures that were doomed. Something happened to them. They were destroyed. So he wants us to learn from our human experience. So he focuses our attention on these two Society, social orders, structures, infrastructures, technologically advanced urban centers. And these are located, Thamud and Ad, if you go back to the history books and you try to figure out where in the world are they, where are they on the map? Generally speaking, one of them uh, was in the south of the Arabian Peninsula in the area called Hadramaut and Yemen and Oman today. And the other one was in the east and the central and the north of the Arabian Peninsula. 
And these were in two separate time spans. They were not coterminous with each other. But both of them, because the ayah says, كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ Both of these, let's call them now civilizations. Both of these civilizations, when they were presented, when uh, their prophets, Hud and Saleh, when they came to them and said, look, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, a day of judgment, there's a ultimate power, Urbudullah. What did these prophets say to their people, to their societies? Urbudullah ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. You comply with Allah because you have no deity or authority besides Him. That's the one you comply with. Not some, you know, king or president or some person who has a lot of power and money and these other things that distract us from this fact. And so what, how, what's the answer from these types of people and this type of society, generally speaking? The answer is, no, 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 what are you talking about, you know? Look at us, look at our prosperity, look how technologically advanced we are. This is what happens to, to human nature. When it is saturated with wealth and power, it goes awry, it goes astray. كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ Another ayah in Surah Iqra. But we are called social beings in the Quran. We social beings, insan, we have a tendency for tughyan. When does that happen? When we, when we perceive ourselves to be affluent. كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَنْ رَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى I don't need God. I don't need all this metaphysical stuff and you speak about the final day and you speak about this. Who needs that? Can't you see? Where did our prosperity come from? So they attribute that to themselves. God is absent. He's absent from their plans, from their strategies, from their programs, from everything that they are mentally involved in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absent. He doesn't figure in. And this was the case with Ad and Thamud. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ فَأَمَّا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more or less, one, you know, open your minds, please read and understand. I'm trying, Jalla Jalalu, I'm trying to advance, to give you a lesson so that what happened in the past does not happen in the present and in the future. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ فَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِالطَّاغِيَةِ this one civilization, Thamud, which is supposed to be to the northern parts of the Arabian Peninsula. There, if any of you had the opportunity to visit those places, uh, you may recall, or if you, you're a history buff and you read these books, there's something called Mada'in Salah. These are these places that are carved they still exist today. You can go and see. Uh, but, you know, um, after their total annihilation, they still have these structures up until this very day. So, فَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِالطَّاغِيَةِ Thamud, they were ruined by what's called a taghiya. Without going into the different types of explanations for this word, what it turns out to be is a violent atmospheric change. A violent atmospheric uh, or climate disaster. They're gone. 
فأما ثمود فأهلكوا بالطاغية وأما عاد فأهلكوا بريح صرصر عاتية As for Ad, they were vanquished, they were ruined, they were destroyed by a violent wind. Sarsar, the word sarsar, it's almost like you can hear, just by using the word, you can almost hear the wind blowing at violent speeds. Atia, it eradicates everything in its course, in its way, in its path. Everything is gone. فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا Allah utilized this climate or atmospheric violence, so to speak, against them for seven, for seven nights and eight days, Continuously, without any break. سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا Okay, so what, what, what do we see now? فَتَرَى الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا صَرْعَا كَأَنَّهُمْ أَعْجَازُ نَخْلٍ خَاوِيَةٍ After this... At, this wild, fierce, atmospheric change, you look at what's left of this, فَتَرَى الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا صَرَعَ You'll see the people of that society dead. And you'll see the remnants of that society as if it were palm trees that were cut down. This, you know, for some of you, I don't know, growing up in the Western world and watching Hollywood and all of this, you'll see some of these pictures, some of these scenes you will see when a natur natural disaster happens in a particular area. Look at what you see. You'll just see remnants of what used to be an elaborate infrastructure. Now it's only remnants. فَتَرَى الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا صَرْعَا كَأَنَّهُمْ أَعْجَازُ نَخْلٍ خَاوِيَةٍ فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةٍ Can you see anything left of them now? They're gone. This is real. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He is providing us with something real. This is not a joke. And then the, the, uh, the historical focus now shifts to another time frame. وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتُ بِالْخَاطِئَةِ Fir'aun, the, 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 you know, Fir'aun is a name that was given to, in particular, is a description given to the tyrannical ruler in Egypt. So now the, the scenery in the Qur'an, the light is shed on him. وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ And those before him, meaning those characters, those power structures that existed before him. وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتُ Here, once again, we have different meanings uh, or different explanations to this word. But al-mu'tafika is related to the word ifk. And mu'tafika is a society that is constructed on the sabotage of the facts and the truth. وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ There's another qira'a. وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قِبَلَهُ Not وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ وَمَنْ قِبَلَهُ Those who were adjacent to him in time. بِالْخَاطِئَ In the most serious of social mistakes. What did they do? فَعَصَوْ رَسُولَ رَبِّهِمْ 
فَأَخَذَهُمْ أَخْذَةَ الرَّابِيَةَ They disobeyed, they rebelled, they were, in, they were incalcitrant towards the messenger of their sustainer, so Allah took them in a supreme way. And you can look at, you know, in, in the other ayat in the Quran, Quran what was the, the final moment in life of the Pharaoh? The well-known Pharaoh in the time of Musa. He drowned. And at the moment he was drowning, he said, Now I believe, now I uh, acknowledge, now I affirm the sustainer of Musa. Oh, it's too late. You, 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 nothing can be done at that time. Now, in, uh, لما, now the ayah also shifts to another time frame, a previous one, an earlier one. إِنَّا لَمَّا طَغَى الْمَاءُ حَمَلْنَاكُمْ فِي الْجَارِيَةِ When the water reached unprecedented heights, this is in reference to the flood or the deluge in the time of Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, we carry, carry, carried you in a vessel that rides the waves. حَمَلْنَاكُمْ فِي الْجَارِيَةِ لِنَجْعَلَهَا لَكُمْ تَذْكِرَةً So that we will render this as a reminder for your collective brains. Allah is speaking about civilizations. He's speaking about different epochs of time. He's, he's, he's concentrating on human history. لِنَجْعَلَهَا لَكُمْ تَذْكِرَةً وَتَعِيَهَا أُذُنُ وَاعِيَةً And so that an ear that is attentive can tune in to these historical and relevant facts. Now, to try to tie all of this together, the ayah, the surah began al haqqa the day in which, uh, the day of accountability, the day of judgment, that is the inevitable of ultimate truth and justice. That, if, you see, unfortunately, we've been fractured. We, the Muslims, we've been fractured. We only think about fragmented truths and fragmented justice. We haven't built our mental capacity to think about ultimate justice and ultimate truth, which is the haqq, from which the word al-haqq is derived. So al-haqq, the integral and the core part of al-haqq is due its manifestation. Regardless of what you encounter in your life, you encounter, oh, someone did me right, someone did me wrong. That's, that's fragmentary. That's fractional. The ultimate is, if you are with Allah, if you accompany these meanings in your life, there's going to be an ultimate justice, there's going to be an ultimate truth, and a manifestation of that. And what we have, to make a long story short, what we have are two bodies of knowledge. We have social knowledge, and we have physical knowledge. We have knowledge that has to do with human nature, which is not quantifiable. Human na you can't put human nature in a laboratory and come out with mathematical equations. It doesn't work that way. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal equipped us with this book, with this Qur'an, with this revelation, so that we become knowledgeable concerning this human nature that has its tendency to go astray. So in this book of knowledge, there are breaks. There's a break to the tendency to go astray. And what happens is when we socially deviate so much 
as much as we are technologically advanced, what is social has its impact on what is physical and material. You know, nowadays they speak about hunger and they speak about economic dislocations, they speak about unemployment, they speak about all of these issues that occupy. And all of these issues have to do with the material world. The body of information in the material world thinks that it can reach unprecedented prosperity by neglecting human nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, no, both, both knowledges, both bodies of knowledge, the social knowledge that you have, and by the way, we don't have much social knowledge if we go to their universities, their behavioral studies, and their departments of humanities. And what's social knowledge in there? You can just look at the past 100 years. There was a development of a certain theory in social knowledge that came collapsing 25 or 30 years ago. It's gone. And I think most of you know what I'm talking about, not, if, not all of you. But the social knowledge we have in the Qur'an is virtually absent from our operational thoughts. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bring, demonstrating to us how societies fall, how civilizations collapse, and he's telling that that really doesn't have to do with the uh, technological achievements that they have as much as it has to do with the social and the human failures that we have. So to put it in other words, something maybe you can understand a little more right now. Right now there's a lot of sp uh, people talk about climate change. They are talking about, you know, the disasters that are waiting to happen. Well, if we take a look and we learn from our shared human history, we understand that previous civilizations and modernities and progress and technology and all of that, they collapsed because of, you know, just to, to squeeze a concept in a couple of words, because of climate change. What was the, the Tufan of Nuh, of Nuh what, the deluge of Nuh? What was a rajfa What was what we uh, spoke about here? a taghiya Rih, Sarsar, Atiya, Akhda, Rabia. What is all of this? It is, it is a, a violent. And they, right now, they are mild because they don't have access to the Qur'an. Many of these scientists who are speaking now are just dealing strictly with hardcore material uh, calculations that they have uh, uh, with the variety of them. It's not one uh, uh, field of science. Many fields of science, they all agree when they finally put the numbers together, we're approaching something calamitous, something disastrous is going to happen, not only uh, because the world has shrunk before we had maybe a civilization here and that geography, a civilization in another part of the world, but right now the world has sort of shrunk into what they call a global village. So the disaster now is threatening not a peculiar society per se, but is threatening all of mankind and all of this planet. So when you hear some people, uh, you know, saying this is a hoax, this climate change, all this, listen to them, where do they come from? They come from people who are power and people who have wealth. And they don't want to see the disruption of the status quo, a status quo that is bringing uh, the indicators that we had in this ayah to our fore. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have us learn more from the precious book that we have and the invaluable information therein. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizuqna tiba'ah wa arina al-baatila baatilan wa rizuqna ijtinaabah wa la taj'alhu multabisan alayna wa ja'alna lil-muttaqina imama wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.